everybody and welcome to Lucky 7 Workshop. This is workshop number three already. I don't know where the month is going, it's just flying by, but I'm having a great time. Um, as many of, of you already know, I am a school teacher and my time is so limited. I'm uh, really hoping that when the school year starts again that I'll be able to do some of these workshops. It's a little easier for me in the summertime to be able to do these because I have a lot more time. But uh, hopefully during the fall and during the school year, I'll be able to do a few workshops. I'm having such a great time with these and sharing with you some of the ideas and some of the techniques that I have. We're gonna continue with the Lucky 7 kit today. And I'm gonna be um, sharing with you uh, something. I tell you what, you gotta get out a white crayon today or a clear wax crayon because we're going to go back and do a resist that maybe you did clear back in grade school. This is a technique that my students just love to do and it's something you can do in your art journals. So let's get started. Let me tell you a little bit of what I've done to prep for this. We're going to do the same technique on two different pages. One of them is a plain page. The other one I have put gesso on. Now gesso is a, um, it's to prep the surface that you're going to be working on. And when you're working on plain paper, sometimes the paints just get really absorbed into that and don't move around. So it depends on the look that you want. So I'm going to be going through both of these techniques. And um, you can decide on what technique you like or maybe try them both yourself. Now, gesso, um, there's lots of different brands of gesso. And the different brands, you'll get a different texture and a different feel. This one is by Liquitex. This is the one that I used for today. And you can also get um, small bottles of gesso too. And you can get these at just about any place that has craft supplies. So, the first page is the one without the gesso. And what I'm gonna do, um, I don't wanna leave my paper stark white, so I'm gonna be toning that down just a little bit. I'm going to be using one of my distressed inks by Tim Holtz. This one's antique linen and it's pretty light colored. And I'm just going to, this is the one that is not gesso. And I'm just going to kind of rub this over it. So I want to tone that white down. And then we're going to put a little water on it and see if we can't kind of blend that together. Now, like I said, this one's not gesso. So it's already soaked in quite a bit of that paint. And but I am able to move a little bit of it around. Okay. Now if you don't, if you think you have too much paint, you can always take a paper towel and just kind of pat off the paint. And I'm going to be actually patting off some of the extra moisture too. Okay, now let's go to the next page, the page that's gesso, and let's uh, compare what happens here. Now I can feel right away that it just doesn't quite grab the, the uh, paint like this one did. So I'm gonna, I am pushing a little bit harder to get that paint on. Now this paint, since it did not grab and soak into the paper, is really moving around very easily. And if I took my paper towel on this right now while it's wet, I would definitely be taking off a lot of that paint. So I'm going to let this one dry. I kind of like these brush lines that I'm getting. I don't know if you can see that. But I'm going to hold this up a little bit closer so you can kind of see those brush lines. A little bit more paint. Well, I guess it's not paint. Stain. We'll add a little bit more stain. And I'm going to hold this up a little bit closer. Maybe you can see some of those lines so that you can see the difference between the two. Okay, this is the gesso paged, page, gesso page. 
and kind of move that around. Sometimes the reflection's pretty bad. And then here's the one without the gesso. So you can take, uh, um, you can play around with this yourself, see if you like um, with gesso or without the gesso. Like I said, it's more porous without it, so it's going to grab the paint, it's going to dry, it's going to soak in a little bit quicker. This one, the paint tends to stay on the surface when it's gesso. Okay. Let me give this a quick dry. Now, I like the look of the gesso page, but I also like the look of the paint without the gesso. They're just different, but I like them both. And we're going to do the same thing on both of them as far as the technique for today. Now, um, I'm going to take this word art that just says lucky on it, and I'm not going to trace all those lines. I'm just going to kind of make it solid. I've got some tracing paper, and if you don't have tracing paper, um, I was reading online somewhere that you can actually use newspaper for tracing paper. So um, try that. Try just a piece of newspaper and then put it down and, and test it and see if it works if you don't have tracing paper. So I'm going to take my tracing paper, make sure that you've got the right the side down that will trace, and place it exactly where you want it to be. Now I'm going to go ahead and trace both of my pages, the gesso one and the one without the gesso, and I'll be right back.